They didn't know it at the time, but these men built a little bit of France. At this, their first reunion since the end of the war, they are back to relive their pioneering days. Vous voulez monter dans la voiture Là, vous êtes chez vous, là. Euh, au volant ou ici Oh, ben, n'importe comment. Au volant Oh, je viens de m'asseoir avec plaisir. C'est historique, alors. These men helped to engineer this, the Citroën de Chavaux. It was designed to be cheap to buy, light in weight, economical, comfortable, and not particularly fast. The first de Chavaux was announced in October 1948. It's still with us today. Just. It's been a slow crawl through history for this living antique. For this is Lescago en Tau, the tin snail. This is Paris. Finding the best way through the wide tree-lined avenues is like the Lottery Nationale. Perhaps appropriately, the French motor industry has always been based here, rather than some provincial industrial center. Even today, French industry still leans heavily on this commercial cultural capital. But Paris can be a relaxed and shameless place, at apparent odds with any useful work at all. Mid-morning in the cafe society admire each other on the chic boulevard Saint-Germain. <laughs> Meanwhile, the troubled European motor industry grinds by. For the French domestic manufacturers like Renault, Peugeot and Citroën, competition has never been tougher. But nearly 40 years on, the tin snail still jousts in this sea of steel, its feeble speed and loping gait somehow better suited than ever to the jammed streets. But it was originally conceived for a very different France. In 1934, Secret market research revealed to Citroën that a whole section of French society could not afford to own a car. They were les fermiers, the staunchly individual and proud farmers. Families with their own small holdings dotted all the way across this vast agricultural country. In the 30s, a horse and cart was their vehicle. 
But as young apprentices, these men weren't aware that their new car was conceived to mobilize this agrarian population. The year is 1936, a new beginning for the Citroen car company. Andre Citroen's empire had been based on the mass production of munitions during the First World War. An obsessive gambler, he had risked everything to become the doyen of the French motor industry. Léon Renault, his Parisian neighbor, proved to be the major threat. In a bizarre game of technological poker, each raised the odds to industrialize Paris. Perhaps wisely, Citroën looked to America for inspiration and advice. He was never too proud to buy in American technology for his new automobile business. An historian who has studied the evolution of the European motor industry is Patrick Friedensen. André Citroën always said that he had a privileged relationship with Henry Ford and made some of his ads on the theme that he was the French Ford. And he used definitely several of the features of uh, Fordism in marketing, in, uh, for instance, in dealerships uh, were made after the American uh, uh, pattern. Henry Ford's moving assembly lines proved to Citroen that cars could be made quickly and for less money. Crucial in his race against Renault. Of course, Henry Ford had revolutionized American motoring with this, the extraordinary Model T. It was the world's first real utility vehicle, much admired by the French. There is no doubt that André Citroën gleaned plenty from the master of mass production. And anyway, his frequent trips across the Atlantic were always useful publicity. Back in Paris, marketing was a gamble that proved irresistible. Millions of francs were poured into massive publicity stunts, like this extravagant and indulgent illumination of the Eiffel Tower. Teetering on the brink of bankruptcy, Citroen played his trump card. On the 18th of April, 1934, Citroen launched this dramatic new car, the Traction Avant, the world's first mass-produced front-wheel drive car. The body was chassisless, a monocoque, the simple French word for a single shell. The engine and transmission, including the revolutionary front wheel drive, were simply bolted onto the front of this monocoque. Not surprisingly, the idea was American. It's been suggested that the first 5,000 of these monocoques were imported from the Bud Company in America and subsequently made by Citroen under license. The car was not an immediate success, but it has since slipped into motoring mythology as the sleek all-black car preferred by the pipe-smoking detective Maigret. It was rather stylishly adapted as a utility vehicle, probably becoming the world's first hatchback. Certainly, partisans in a hurry found its tenacious road holding useful. <laughs> 